Wednesday. Do I look exhausted? Because I kind of am. I'm having a really hard time waking up in the morning. I, I think that's just still a byproduct of detoxing. I did a super detox. Oh, you probably already read about it. I'm going to try not to be so repetitive this week. I didn't realize until I was editing last week's video that how repetitive I am. <laughs> I'm like stuck on stupid. Things at the office are going very well. It's already Wednesday, so I haven't even had time. I, I keep forgetting my camera, so I'm hoping to get some more footage today. Um, yeah, things are going amazing. Uh, I can't complain. I'm just tired. I think that's hormonal, and I think it's still just me adjusting to a different lifestyle. Um, so yeah, that's it. I wish I had more to report. Uh, I basically go to work, for, and, I, and it takes me an hour to get in and an hour to come home because Atlanta traffic is ridiculous. Um, and then I write on my lunch break, and I write when I come home, and I pass out at like 10.30 p.m. I get up at 5 and start all over again. So, but so far the job itself is very technical. It's, it's not exciting, but I have to say that um, just being responsible for yourself and just do, and I think technical work is good for me right now. It's so good to just be responsible for putting out good content. It's like such a, I don't have to worry about anybody getting on a plane and fucking everything up. I mean, it's just, it's just great. Um, what else? I don't know. I talked to the kids last night. That was amazing. Um, so yeah, I'll get more footage today, but I uh, just wanted to let you guys know the, the day job is going incredible. It's going great. Okay, well, it is Thursday the 12th. <laughs> And I am on my way to um, Starbucks to upload the podcast. So this is basically what I do. I work all morning um, on digital media for the campaigns I, I do. Uh, it's so funny. It's like they give me the, the two nationwide campaigns I'm working on right now are um, economy brands. And it seems like I'm like the economy brand guru, like I am the poverty professor. It's freaking hilarious. So um, I'm not as tired today as I was yesterday. Yesterday I was cashed out. Um, today I feel a lot better. I took my B vitamins. Um, so oh shoot, I was supposed to turn right here. Crap, there's no cops around, are there? All right. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, that's just my life. Here I am. I eat lunch at my desk. I pack my peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I, uh, um, go to Starbucks, dump the, st um, and I <sighs> go to Starbucks and work. So the podcast, I stayed up late last night doing it. It was hard to stay up late and do it, but I did. And um, got it done, so I'm gonna go upload it now and come back to the office and do some more digital media. Anyway, it was like, what I was saying before, before I forgot my turn, was that I'm like the go to girl for the economy brands. And it's so funny. It's like, I, I'm, in a way, I'm kind of like proud of that. Like, yeah, I can, you know, I should be bougie, but I'm not. And yeah, I can definitely speak to these budget brands and, uh, um, make them appealing and so it's really cool. I said the Facebook today during a meeting when I was doing a Facebook pitch and I was like way to go Jen like way to be old but the good thing is that I'll work with like a bunch of young hipsters so everybody just thought it was adorable I was like yeah and when we put everything on the Facebook and the team leader is like you just said the Facebook that is adorable and I'm like I am such a bumpkin Midwest bumpkin so, all right, well, that's today's update. Um, last one here at work. I don't have go home early on Friday privileges yet, but that's okay. I have an office. I'm starting to decorate it. See? Kids and dad. I have a window. Remember the last place I worked? I didn't have one. Like jail window. <laughs> There's the rest of my office. 
You guys get the tour. Don't mind my dirty desk. It's so cool. It's been a good week. It's been a really good week. I don't know why I'm whispering. Why am I whispering? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. We're doing it, guys. We're doing it. Pretty stoked. Pretty stoked. I can't stop smiling. Sorry. <laughs> Sunday morning. I actually don't have to be, be anywhere today. I have to work, but I don't have to be anywhere. So I'm heading to the mountain for a hike. I feel like I have done really well with staying very disciplined and very on task for, you know, as far as everything I want to accomplish, but my fitness, and I think it's just because I wasn't, I haven't felt hot with all the changes, like physically, so um, I, I'm definitely going to go get some exercise, and it's, even though I have tons of energy today, um, and I feel great and I want to go out and just conquer, conquer, conquer. I am trying to be very cognizant of resting. Like this morning I really wanted to sleep in. The dogs were like, fuck no, get up, bitch. So, um, yeah, I don't have to go to the store today. I don't have to do any reporting for the magazine. I don't have to do any digital media stuff. Um, so I'm basically going to go to the mountain, hike and come back and get ready for the week ahead. Talk to the kids, hopefully. I, didn't, I haven't talked to the kids since Tuesday, and I don't know why. Uh, they were at a dance on Thursday. I called Friday, no answer. So, I don't know. <sighs> Just write it down. Anyway, off to the mountain. Get some fresh air, get some blood moving. Go hike six miles or so. And come back. I thought I'd share a little bit of my process with you guys, um, just in case any of you are writers and you're curious how I do it. Um, Every entity I write or create, even this series, has its own notebook. Um, my editorial notebook is in my briefcase out in the other room. Um, that is basically how I outline all of this. It's like the master book. Um, this is Some Die Just to Live. This is When You're Far Away. And I have... Um, other other books um this is a just a journal this one is for steel wheels which is a another book i'm working on so basically i have volumes upon volumes of notebooks everywhere at any time um and okay, this is when you're far away and uh basically so this is the chapter three outline of when you're far away and I do bullet points of plot points I want to hit um, in every chapter or section. And um, as I'm writing, like as I'm typing, excuse me, that's when dialogue and transitions and other story ideas pop in my head. But I always go into a chapter with a full framework of um, what I'm working with and I come up with ideas. and. I'm really just a, uh, that's just how I do it. Um, I know people just sit down at the computer and do rough drafts and everything, but uh, that's how I write. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to go get the, the editorial book. So this is the Big Daddy. This is the editorial book. Um, just like with my fiction, it, it's outlined. Um, I color code. I mean, like, I'm incredibly insane about organization and color coding and so this is if you guys remember the devil wears prada like the master this is my master <laughs> this is the book miranda would want um so if you look at the tabs 
like this is the week ending and I always file the last weeks I don't keep it in the book um, so this is what I'm gonna do for these are just ideas for lifestyle this week um, the blog health and fitness fiction and then if you go around you've got uh, brand media podcasts and stories and wine so yeah this is this is the lookbook and then um, when the week is over I tear the pages out and file it so welcome to my organizational process what is that on the table <laughs> something's ugh, that's gross anyway um, somebody got their paws up here and smeared some stuff around so I will be washing that anyway that's ridiculous and, and, and I do um, actually put a lot of thought into the kind of notebook like I'll stand there in the aisle and pick exactly the right notebook um, this one obviously is an idea book so that's why it's perfect um, I just want you guys to know that I'm actually a three-year-old and I always like cookies and milk before bed <laughs> I could never give it up it's either cookies and milk or hot chocolate lately it's been hot chocolate or it's tea and in butter cookies it's either chocolate chip cookies and chocolate milk or tea and butter cookies because I am an actual child so I'm going to have to ask you to stop being jealous of how pretty I am <laughs> Definitely, this project is definitely not a vanity project. I keep looking at my hair like if it were any greasier, you could fry bacon on it. So, what an amazing week. Like, I am so ready. Like, physically, I feel better than I have in a forever. It's like all of a sudden my body was like, okay, we got you. We're going to catch up. Like I went on that hike today and kicked my ass, but I feel fantastic. Like at this time and night last week, I was ready to keel over and die and I could keep going. But um, I, I think that I have, I have, I'm on the right path. There's a lot more balance to what I'm doing right now. Um, I guess I talked to the kids tonight that made everything so much better. Um, there's some things I need to work on. I feel like I am still kind of slacking a bit as I as I get going, but it was only the first week. So I definitely kind of can gauge how working in the office is going to be and then, you know, my nights and uh, I have a very long day on Tuesday because I have to work at the office and then go work at the store because I'm training. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, woo! But like this weekend, I worked yesterday at the store and um, I worked today on some creative, got everything planned out for the week. I just have to stay disciplined and I have to stay positive. Um, and I haven't, I, I've been hit with some curveballs this week. Uh, I think the hardest thing yesterday was living in my own little bubble. I didn't have to go near where I used to work, which is where the two axes live in that area. And there's the potential of running into them at all times over there. The store is over there. And I had to take the way I used to take to work back and forth every day um, into the store on Saturday. And it was sad. <laughs> I got sad. But then I was okay. Like it just, I had to like drive by the old office, and um, and I have to admit that I was like on the lookout for cars. Like <laughs> I was like white truck, black truck, white truck, black truck. I mean, completely insane. So, um, but I got over it pretty quickly. I'm gonna run into them. I'm uh, I'm probably gonna run into them at some point because it's too small of an area. I'm going to run into to either one or the other or both, most likely in the summertime. So, But I'll have plenty of time to get ready for that. Uh, otherwise, I don't have much to say. <laughs> I think that I'm definitely on the right path. Definitely on the right path. I think that everything worked out the way it was supposed to. I mean, the vision is becoming much more crystal clear to me. Uh, my 
my plan has, has after this last this first week of getting my bearings and figuring out the new office and figuring out my workflow and figuring out how I'm going to manage everything. I think now coming into the second week, I'm definitely going to have momentum. I know how, you know, how I feel at the end of the day. I know what I can and can't get done. Still not drinking. And, and let me tell you, didn't even miss it. Like, didn't even miss it. Um, I just like, today I feel so good. It's like usually on a Sunday, there were Sundays I didn't even get out of bed. <laughs> I mean, I would go through my, I was like, oh my God, I watched Netflix until, I mean, there was a day I watched um, the entire series. The day, the one that should not be named, and I completely severed, like the day after. That was November 4th, so November 5th. I literally, on November 4th, drank everything in my house. I was so upset. Like, I know I sent him an email that was completely banana pants crazy. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sure it was insane. Uh, and I, um, the next day was so like, pfft, which I mean, it, uh, breakups are bad. Um, but this one, it, I was still with the other guy. <laughs> It was just so weird. God, my life was so weird. Um, so, uh, and I didn't even get out of bed for 10 hours. For 10 solid hours, I watched The Crown in my pajamas. And I just think like, God, even this time last year, I stayed in bed all day on a Sunday because Jeremy, oh my God, Jeremy. Oh. oh, he was on the Twitter. I snapped about this. He's on the Twitter. Okay, let me let me just give you guys the full story here. So, Jeremy's on Twitter. Go ahead and find him. Not hard. I follow him because when I started the brand media Twitter account, just to have a Twitter account, it followed all of the contacts in my phone. Well, at the time, this was before I did the, the Great Purge, I still had Jeremy in my phone. So it followed Jeremy. Jeremy's got all of seven fat followers. So <laughs> I'm going to actually write a whole blog series about my relationship with him just because he's not worth my time to, and I have no revenge in my heart for him. I just want to tell the story because I feel like it's a story that women can relate to or even men can relate to when um, you don't get over the real problem and so you start to you you send somebody in as the understudy and rebound really bad and end up making a bad situation worse I should have just wrote out the fallout with OGP rather than um, replace him with Jeremy because it's like now we're exactly a year later and I'm watching this idiot just continue his charade and it's like it it's become okay for me to talk about it. Like I have walked over the threshold, so now I can I can verbalize what happened, I can articulate what happened, I can talk about what happened. Because what he did was next level. Like, like he, uh, so, and I'm not gonna use his name in the blog post. Um, you guys know who he is. It's not hard to figure out who he is. Um, you know, it, I have no, I have no, um, reason to ruin his Google search for the rest of his life. He's going to have to get a job. I don't even think he's working. He's going to be 40 in March and he still lives with his parents. I mean, geez. at least he's not mooching off me anymore. Um, but I think it is a good story. You guys are going to read these stories and be like, Jen... Jen, and it's going to seem so blatantly, and I'll tell you, it was blatantly obvious to me too, but denial is so strong and it's such a good drug. Eventually it wears off, but in the meantime, it, it works. So especially since we're like a year since the beginning of the end, like Christmas was actually the beginning of the end last year for us. So, um, it, and with OG and I, now OG and I are not a thing and we aren't probably ever going to be a thing the thing with us is is that 
there's so much history there. He really, really gets me. And he is thoughtful and keeps a reason. I, mean, I can't see that's the thing is I can't articulate about him. You know, I think that there is a, a dance we do. <laughs> um, but I'm definitely not pursuing a thing with him because I'm not doing that right now. Right now we're focusing on work, 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 work. Uh, if that is meant to be, it'll happen. I got myself into trouble with him and it started the whole Jeremy, what's his face, what's his face, you know, downward spiral. So I'm not doing that. I am going to focus on me, work, 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 work. And if it turns, if we turn a corner and decide to, to, to do it again, great. If we don't, we still are going to be the best of friends and, you know, at least there's going to be clo there's closure there now. Like I have mourned it, grieved it, ready to move on. So tomorrow's Monday, onward and upward. Let's do this. I feel good. I feel good. I look like shit. Don't judge me. <laughs> that hike was hard. It was hard. I just want cookies and milk. It's good. I'm happy. Content. Happy is a misnomer. Content. This is definitely manageable and doable. <laughs>